Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Vikram. It's a new movie out now on Hulu. This is a movie written and directed by Lokesh Kanagaraj and co-written by Rathna Kumar. This is an action thriller movie. This is a sequel to a movie that came out in 1986, I believe, uh, by the same name, Vikram, uh, which a fun fact is similar. This movie has similarities to Top Gun. The first Top Gun film came out in 1986, and both movies, both franchises have sequels that came out this year, and both did very well. Uh, This movie, obviously, being an Indian film, uh, and I, you know, was not aware that it was a sequel, uh, but after having watched the film, it makes complete sense that it is a sequel. It also kind of feels like it sets up for another movie in the franchise, which would be fun, I would say. Uh, and this movie did very well. Uh, maybe not as well as Top Gun did. I have yet to see Top Gun, but of course everybody knows it's it's the number one movie of the year. It's beat out many movies as far as the top spot, as far as revenue. Uh, but as far as blockbusters go, Vikram is in that top spot as well, especially for the Indian audiences. And I was looking forward to watching this movie. Not only was this movie recommended to me multiple times multiple occasions by multiple people Uh, i've been getting a lot of movie recommendations for indian films uh on my reviews for other indian films that i've done i've absolutely loved getting into indian films uh these past few months and uh so i was looking forward to it and i was excited that it came out on hulu uh, because i was looking for it looking for ways to watch it. it wasn't available and then literally I was going to have another movie that was going to be reviewed this week, and I saw an advertisement that Hulu was going to release it, and I immediately added it to my list and was excited to watch it, and I did. And I have to say, this movie takes a while. It took a while for me to really get into the movie. It really about halfway through this movie is where I felt like I was really in it and I was excited to like like it, it felt it felt kind of laborious at times with the first half of this film just because there's a lot of setup there's a lot of things going on and and when I say half of the film uh, this movie like so many Indian films this one is almost three hours long two hours and 55 minutes. So about 90 minutes in is where I was like, okay, here we go, here we go, we're moving now, we're getting... And not to say that there wasn't anything beneficial for the first half of this film, it's just a lot of setup. Uh, it, it's The movie is about a lot of ki- kinds of things. It starts off with the cops are bringing in this like black ops crew, or maybe not the cops, but like the, the government... Is bringing in this black ops crew, this crew that can work outside the boundaries of the law uh, to find out who's killing all these people. There's a serial killer on the loose, and they bring in this crew uh, that's able to work outside the boundaries of the law. And so a lot of the first part of this film is that black ops crew investigating these murders. And one of the people that was murdered doesn't really fit in with their uh, the, the other people that were also part of these murders. So it ends up being this investigation of this guy who ends up becoming, uh, we get to know as Vikram. And uh, once we kind of see, once that Black Ops crew kind of finds out what's really going on and everything kind of falls into place about halfway through... Then it really gets interesting. Obviously, I'm going to be spoiling aspects of this movie. It's a fun action movie. Like I said, takes a while to get in in the the groove. Uh, But there are some fun action moments. And it has, like, over-the-top kind of action. There's some funny moments as well. uh, Which, you know, a lot of these aspects and flavors are pretty similar Um, Pretty common in a lot of Indian films where I've seen where it's like no matter what kind of movie you're watching, 
every Indian film is almost going to touch on a different type of emotion throughout the film, which I appreciate that. I appreciate, and that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of their films are so long is because they do they do kind of humanize and explore all of the different people and all the different emotions. So even when it doesn't necessarily work, when it, maybe it feels a bit more of a chore to get through, uh, it uh, inevitably eventually pays off. The movie that I watched recently that I would compare like as far as taking a while to get going uh, would be KGF Chapter 1. Uh, and that movie is a lot of setup, and about halfway through, it really feels like it, it's getting going, and, and I really enjoyed the second half of that movie more than the first half. So this movie, similarly, uh, although I think I would enjoy, I enjoyed KGF Chapter 1 more than this movie, they are similarly structured in that way, where that first half is a lot of, a lot of uh, setup. Uh, but I will be spoiling this. So if you haven't watched the film, you know, it's got your it's got your thriller moments, it's got your action moments, it's got corruption, it's got uh crime, it's got almost like super super heroes kind of action y type of scenes, uh good guy trying to take bad guy, drug dealer down, trying to eradicate drugs from society. You know, kind of a, a grandiose type of idea that uh, I think America has proven is a complete waste of money and energy to uh, to <laughs> the idea that you're going to eliminate drugs from society. But it is that kind of a movie where the good guy is trying to take down these corrupt drug dealers. And, uh, you know, of course, anything that's illegal is going to involve uh, many other illegal things that go hand in hand. Uh, and it's not surprising that the government is involved. And uh, so with all that said, th that's your warning. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, but once you kind of find out, once that halfway point fi you find out, and you have Amar, who is the leader of the Black Ops crew, when he finds out that the leader of the like assassins the serial killers that are going around these masked killers is going around once he finds out that that's vikram and that vikram was a former black ops type of a guy similar to amar then and you find out that like oh the cops were involved and in helping out with the drug dealers so then it becomes kind of the government and the drug dealers against uh, Vikram and his crew and the Black Ops crew, how it, how that kind of, how the, the tables kind of turn in a certain way and the, the players kind of realign in different groups. Then it starts getting going. And then I'm like, okay, okay, this makes sense. Because before it's like they're investigating Vikram and he was going by another name and it's like his son was... Uh, killed but it's like is it his son is is it his adopted son or the son adopted him which is weird but then there's this grandkid that uh, the vikram's really connected to and is really protective of and it's just like it's just like very confusing the first half of this movie i was confused didn't really know what was going on we're, we're getting introduced to these different characters like the doctor who's the guy who cooks i think they're selling meth uh, is the the drug that you know that's more it's more valuable than cocaine they're going to be making trillions of dollars on these drugs that were stolen uh, and that's why they're and we get to know him and he's like obsessed with his gold tooth like this guy in every scene is like massaging his gold teeth with his tongue and then anytime he's in a fight and he needs like a booster like a superpower booster he eats what I believe to be meth which I don't know if that's how meth works. I've never used meth, but I don't think you can just eat it. And then I'll, I know you probably feel like you have superpowers for sure, but I don't know if you can just ingest it in that way. I'm ignorant to the whole process of meth, but uh, in this movie, that's what it seems like. And it's, it's kind of cartoonish. I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, 
different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right, this is not bad for the environment, this is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases. Designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the Ray Taylor Show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor Show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. And there are some funny parts, like even in the scene, in the moment where Amar is doing his debriefing with the government, and he's like, we found out who this guy is, we believe him to be uh, Vikram. Here are clips from the first movie, I I would assume, of him uh, much younger Uh, this actor who's still playing Vikram and like this is the whole scenario and he was working with these people and like he finds out that the government's involved so the guy in the government goes and they have this like conversation they they can he confronts Amar in the elevator and like everybody in all the offices are like filing following them to the elevator and like standing outside of these elevator doors that they keep closing to have their conversation and then they when they open you have like like a hundred people just standing outside the elevator watching like this confrontation going on funny like there are some funny moments whether they're intentional like i feel like that moment is intentional but then there's like also when you find out the nanny is one of the covert ops like i love that moment it was funny, but I also love that moment. When we, when we find out when they're being attacked towards the end of this movie, and we find out that the, I think she was the nanny, is one of the covert op guys from Vikram's crew. Like, I, I, I like, you know, I, I was cheering at that moment. I was like, yes! And she, she's like a badass fighter. Amazing. An unintentional comedic moment is when the baby requires CPR for some reason. And you have Amar getting instructions over the phone on how to give this baby CPR. The head of the baby looks real, but the body looks completely fake, which is kind of weird because I'm used to seeing in, in many American movies, they do like a CG thing, whether it's the Twilight franchise or American Sniper or or just different things like it, it, it's definitely a different vibe of fake baby and i thought it was funny i think th- i think it it worked better for this movie like seriously the face looked real it almost looked like they popped the kid's head off and put it on a doll body uh but it looked completely fake still even though like i'm supposed to like this, the music of this movie is definitely telling me how to feel at every given moment. Like, and I'm supposed to feel like, uh oh, what's going to happen to this baby? And it's like, I didn't even know why the baby needed CPR to begin with, but they immediately were saying, we need to get this baby out to get CPR. F- unintentional funny moment. Also, during the action scenes, I know the action scenes are coming up because you have the music kicking in, and we're like, oh, here we go. Which is similar to KGF in a lot of ways, where that score would kick in. And you're like, oh, here's going to be some a badass fight scene. And there were some fun fight scenes. It's just the people fighting in this movie have, like, they don't look athletic at all. Like, it's dudes with dad bods, like old dudes with dad bods fighting. Right? You have Vikram, who is an old dude with a dad bod. And you have, like, the doc, the doctor, who's not really a doctor, but they call him a doctor. And he's got a dad bod, but then he does meth, so he's got he's got he's got like more energy. And you know, they punch and people go flying across the room. So it's got like over the top action. But at the same time, I'm watching two dudes that look like they would get winded playing golf in an all out brawl. So kind of unintentionally funny. So there's moments, there's aspects of the movie that I don't think we're meant to pull me out, but they pulled me out in a way. But other than that, like, overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed where the story went. There were definitely some brutal moments. I mean, the 
the fact that Vikram is trying to avenge his son's death and protect his grandchild and that whole scenario kind of getting to know that he was faking being drunk for some reason, faking being a debaucherous guy who goes out and, you know, goes to a brothel, but it's all as a, a ruse in order to do his investigation in secret. Like there was a lot of extra stuff in this movie that didn't really need to be there especially for three hours but then there's some fun action moments like there's a scene towards the end where you have like uh, similar to kgf chapter two uh where you have vikram behind like this giant old school gatling gun and he's just laying waste to the drug dealers that are outside of this factory and it's it's a cool like there's some fun cool action moments that i appreciated the uh, the Black Ops team, there's some fun fight scenes with them. There's some scenes where, you know, they're going in to go stop another assassination or whatever. You know, and all that stuff is fun. You know, you, I'm rooting for the good guys, Vikram, and, you know, to try and take down these drug dealers who are just despicable people. Sure. Uh, and there's fun camera work that's going on. A lot of fun camera work. Like cameras pulling out, pull like all the fight scenes. The way everything was shot was really fun. There's this wedding uh, that a lot of action takes place. The wedding thing was fun. It's kind of a weird, it was also weird, the wedding part of this movie. Where there's like business deals going down at this wedding. And I guess, from what I gathered is the father or grandfather of the bride is a popular YouTube chef, if I had to guess, because part of this was like, they, like how they're filming is like people who are making the food are like giving out the recipe and like they, they're filming people eating and they're like, oh, this food is so good. Kind of weird. I mean, it, it definitely humanizes them in a way, makes them feel like, yeah, okay, there'd be a, f a famous chef YouTube guy. And th and this is, like, his family, and this is what he's known for. And they, they're filming this whole thing that just has nothing to do with the overall plot of the movie. It's just, like, some added detail to a character that we know nothing about. Like, we don't know this family. We don't know the people in this wedding, really. It's just we know that there's a deal going down at this wedding. So it's kind of, it, it, it's interesting the amount of detail that's put into things that don't really matter. Like even a guy that shows up to the, the wedding who's like the former boyfriend of the bride who like parked his bike in the back and like he's being investigated by the black ops crew. And it's like, okay, he's just like some guy that used to go out with the bride and now he's there to try and convince her but that again has nothing to do with the overall plot of this movie it's just interesting it's interesting let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces that's right i am also an artist i do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces a new face a new painting gets released every single day over at inspireddisorder.com so head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want 8x10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to inspiredisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to inspiredisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show the whole stuff all the stuff that happens with amar's wife is like the fact that she is perfectly fine like how he sets it up where it's like you need to trust me 
you you can never ask me what my job is uh and she goes as far as to be like the day the moment i ever ask you what you do for work will be the day that our relationship is over that's how much i trust you that's how much you will never have to worry about me asking you about what your job is as a black ops kind of a guy right and his cover is like they sell computers or whatever and it's like okay like i guess i that's not a very healthy relationship at all like this is not good and then she kind of stumbles into like he just has an interrogation room in the computer thing that's part of her house that she can just stumble in to this guy who's chained up and she gives him food and she ends up helping it's like kind of a weird aspect of the movie where she stumbles in to the guy who's like selling bottles of water or whatever that that was trying to be questioned and like sh I, I i don't know like why is she even there i mean i know they had their wedding and to have guests at their wedding he brought in his team or whatever which means that they were at his i don't i don't know that it just this movie like there was so much that didn't need to be there i got confused because i didn't know what was important to pay attention to and there's so much of it so much of these little details that you don't need to pay attention to they just kind of add decoration to the whole thing add compl unneeded complexity to the whole thing and i guess in some way fleshing out certain aspects but unnecessarily but what happens to his wife definitely brutal but at the same time it's like you know you know why you don't want your wife to know what you do because that would put her in danger so the fact that you are bringing your work so close to, or your wife so close to your work you're just like inviting this danger like the fact that she was able to stumble into your interrogation room where that guy was chained up is like you're bad like that is amar's fault that his wife met the end that she met which was brutal and which was totally predictable that that was going to happen it's like of course just in the same way these bad guys went after vikram's grandson of course they were going to go after his wife they find out his he's married but you know it adds another level you know it makes you care showing the relationship that vikram had with his grandson makes you care that when they go after his grandson that you're invested as an audience and si similarly with her like seeing amar's relationship with her how uh, uh, ridiculous it is when the the moment happens when when the doctor has a machete to her neck like you are invested i was i was like ah this is not good even though it's like i, I knew this was gonna happen but you know it's still it, it it did its job they did their job they got me invested in these characters and also another weird just another weird thing the when vikram had his mask on the voice clearly bane like there were aspects of this movie that were like okay we're doing like parts of the score kind of felt like batman and then the way the masked killer sounded through the voice modulator sounded like bane speaking in another language but it had that same kind of bane voice very weird uh and the movie sets up for a sequel it sets up for vikram versus rolex you know and rolex feels like a rocky type of a character like he is the the head guy of this drug cartel in the same way rocky was the head guy of the gold industry and uh kind of had that similar vibe that rocky has too 
Uh, and the way this movie ends is like, you know, with, with Vikram in the crowd as Rocky is like talking about how the events of this movie disrupted his business and how he's willing to start from scratch if he has to. Um, it made me excited for a sequel. Sure. Like I like knowing now knowing what th these movies are, where it's like a crew, it's like a, a team type of a thing, you know, or Rambo or, you know, it's like we have this special art ops crew that does these missions. They're on their own mission to do good in the world. You know, Mission Impossible type of a thing. And, uh, you know, and even though it's like old dudes with dad bods getting getting down and dirty in fights is it's whatever. Like I like I know what I'm in for. I, I'm, I'm down for it. It may be funny, but I'm still like it's still fun action. So I'm excited for that, despite the fact that the first part of this movie was like kind of just you know, an investigation of these guys and, like, trying to uncover and eventually uncovering that, like, the cops were involved and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, you, you know, how it ends with both Vikram trying to get revenge as well as Amar kind of trying to get revenge, both losing people close to him, Vikram losing his son, Amar losing his wife. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, you know, there, there's similarities there. It's almost kind of like a passing of the torch in a way. You could see them working together in a future film if they if they end up doing a sequel to this movie. And it did well. Vikram d did well, made a lot of money. So I would imagine there would be sequels to it, uh, which I'd watch. I You know, I liked it enough to where I'd watch it. And they don't need to set up things for another movie like going into a sequel similarly to kfg chapter two or kgf chapter two they didn't have to set things up you knew where we were at so you know they they were able to just get going with the story right off the bat uh and i think that would be beneficial to this movie as well with a sequel so i don't know i i'm excited if they do a sequel i haven't looked into it to see if they have or not but um overall it was a fun movie you know, took a while to get going, but uh, overall it was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. So check it out. It's on Hulu. It's called Vikram. Watch it. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where you, you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.